Hi, this is Praveena Shetty. This is my first video on research and methodology. Simplification of it basically. In this board, you can see the whole picture of the topic research and methodology and specifically research plan. I've tried to make it compact and put it in one frame in this one board. Let's deal with it one by one. What does basically research means? Research is a systematic collection, analysis, interpretation to solve a problem. Research methodology is a wider concept which includes various research methods, tools, tools and techniques of data collection, methods of data analysis, etc. So basically research methodology is a bigger concept, wider concept than research tools or research methods. When we want to do a research for any purpose for example, you have to have this research plan in mind. Basically it has about 10 points to be taken into consideration. Let's see this one by one. Let me zoom in to the first point. The first point says formulation of research problem. Whenever one wants to do a research, the first thing is to find out what you want to do a research on. You may select it or if you are a part of a research team, you will be sent to go and research and find a solution for a problem via the research. So the first point is formulation of research problem. What the problem you should take as research for research. The second point is extensive survey of literature. Now, this is done. The second step is taken to see whether someone else have already done a research on it. Can you better it? Is the survey which was done earlier or the research that was done earlier relevant in today's time? Studying this literature, you may come with another problem which you would like to dwell deep into and research further. So you will look into the survey of literature to find out whether your formulation of research problem was the right one or you need to make some changes. Once the research problem is properly founded, then you go to the third one, development of hypothesis. Hypo, less, thesis, a theory. So hypothesis is something which is a little less than a theory. Now if there can be a null hypothesis also here. What you can do is for example set saying that for example if you make steps fun then people will stop using the escalator. This can be your hypothesis. Later on you after research you can you know either say yes I was right or I was wrong when you test your hypothesis. So you frame a kind of a sentence which you are going to prove at the end of this research. So development of hypothesis. Next comes processing the research design. I'm sorry, preparing the research design. You can actually stop it wherever you want and then can get this picture of uh, this uh, tabular form I have made it in. You know, you can pause it and you can then write it down if you want to write it. Uh, the fourth one is preparing the research design. Very important step in the planning. Here you will design the sample. You will dis dis actually f uh, think about what is or what will be your sampling design? How will you observe the design? What will be the statistical uh, way of dealing with the design? 
operational design how this first three sampling observation and statistical part will be taken care and put into practical uh, usage so all this will have to be thought before you actually take on the ground and do research part of it so this whole 10 points will have to be thought before it's like a blueprint a builder makes so he makes the build, uh, blueprint before he builds the building and if he finds any problem he is able to solve it at the thinking level and then when he actually does it in practice there will be less problems for him to handle in the later stages so here is actually how logically one can uh, go about doing that research that is the fourth step now let's zoom in to the fifth point the fifth point is determining the sample design now what do you mean by sample if you're cooking a dish before you give it to somebody you will taste so that's a sample of the whole dish and you will uh, depending on that you will say ah oh, this dish is really very good in the same way you cannot take the population that's in crows for example you can take a sample of that uh, of that population so a sample should properly represent a population suppose um, I'm in the field of yoga so if I go to a yoga class and if I want to interview them you know, so that will be the best place for me to find a sample uh, if I stand uh, at uh, any uh, near a college and and I say okay please come and you know you talk about yoga or give me this uh, questionnaire filled up then it may not be the right sample so what sh what is my total population and where can I find my right sample so determining the sample design so there are two ways of doing it methods of collecting samples uh, it is probability method or it is the random method the probability method is a very good method where everybody feels that they have a chance in get being a sample you know getting through and being a sample in that experiment for example if 10 people are there in the first method for example simple random sampling it's like a lottery system so if I go to a school and I tell you know everybody write uh, your name on a chit and I put it put it in a bowl in front of me and everybody like 50 children they come and they put that chit so everybody has a chance in that it may be a lottery system but there is a chance like if there are 50 so every child has 1 by 50 chance in that 50 1 by 50 1 person chance in that that's a simple random sampling in systematic random sampling it's a little uh, systematic in the sense maybe the first the fifth the tenth so or the odd numbers are taken in the third stratified random sampling for example in army female number is very less so if there are if you're taking a sample of 50 and in the 50 if you have only one female then the lottery system may not work and the female will get no chance in that so a different method is developed here that's called the stratified random sampling then there's cluster or area random sampling for example again if I take the same example of the classroom in the classroom if I want to find out who is staying uh, or who is from the north okay, then I would want only those children to come and uh, be a part of that research then I cannot take all the 50 so if 15 children are there 1, 5, 15 children then in that I may take a lottery system so that is cluster or area random sampling this is a probability method chance method the non probability method okay suppose I am a little lazy and convenience is more important for me sampling and I don't have much time so I go to a school which is just next to my house so that becomes and take 50 students from there you know so that becomes convenience sampling the second is accidental sampling I'm sitting at my home people are coming uh, for tuitions and I tell them okay, okay please uh, since you have come here I will uh, you you do this uh, research for me you know the fill up the questionnaires for me so that becomes like accidental they just accidentally they happen to be there and I have uh, give them, given them the questionnaire judgment suppose a friend of mine is a teacher in a school I tell okay you judge which are the best students in your class and give me 
those best students to fill up my question here. So that is judgment basis. Now these are all very easy examples. May not fit right away into it, but the whole idea is just understand the basic part of it, and then one can dwell dep uh, deeply and find much more about it in you know in the course of study. Then this quota. For example, I have a school. Again, I'm uh, going back to the school. It's become a little easier example for me. That's the reason. Quota. What happens? Suppose I have three schools. One is really near to me, so I take eighty percent of my questioners filled up from that school, and then I go to a school that's a little far away, and then take the twenty percent. So I allot a kind of quota system, snowball system. For example, I go and I um, some children come to my house for tuition. For example, then I tell them, okay, tomorrow you, I, I give you the sweets. You fill up this questionnaire. Tomorrow, if you get two more, then I will give you two more sweets. So the next day, four of them come. Next day, eight of them come. I don't know exactly what number I'm looking for. It's just snowballing. It is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is more of a convenience kind of a thing. This non-probability method, but not everybody gets a. a uh, part uh, or gets a even a chance to be a part of that sample and probably method is a better method but sometimes the situation needs one to take this non probability method also now let's see the next one the next one is after you have decided what is your sample then you go to them and collect the data now when you are collecting data it can be divided into two again primary data collection method or secondary data collection method primary method you have this survey or interview which can be structured non structured open ended no closed ended it can be very formal it can be very informal then it can be observation method also where you go and observe and uh, like for example in a mall you want to find out uh, where people go more to which shop people go uh, go more so there will be an observer who will be just standing and seeing the uh, you know how many people are going to each of this uh, each of this uh, places now that is an observation method now here what is happening is it can be subjective you know it depends upon the researcher it can be a little biased so this is observation method experimentation method of course is an experiment conducted where there is a controlled group where there is an experimental group and then you come to a conclusion then there is a questionnaire method where you give a questionnaire which can be open ended closed ended it can be pictorial type of a type of a questionnaire and they have to either tick it or they have to write yes no so that's a question method so all this comes under the structured form and that is primary data collection method then comes a secondary data collection method it is very difficult very uh, time consuming money consuming uh, to do primary data all the time so one fall back on secondary data uh, collection method now if it is done uh, for the office for example then you could do it internally and uh, look at the earlier product sales analysis do the financial analysis uh, see go through that go through the project reports done so far